So, this is the last section, but it's an important section. This is about seeing the invisible. In today's world of social media, conscious input was so last decade. People lie with clicks, likes, and shares. We don't like things that we secretly like, and we don't comment on things that we're actually really passionate about. So unconscious input, like the milliseconds that you watch a post, they reveal the truth. And that's why social media today is all about looking underneath the tip of the Freudian iceberg and going direct to the deeper id of our unconscious desires. This is the dark future of artificial unconsciousness. And we have to make a choice. Number one, are we going to fear social media and avoid it as much as possible? Or number two, are we going to learn from this unconscious input so that we can take back control? So what if there was an easy way to see our unconscious data in your own social media today? What if there was an easy way? Would that reveal uh, the otherwise invisible forces that control you and your family? Would that help you find an audience for your creative movement faster? Would it help you disrupt the status quo of how screen time is used today? How much would you expect to spend to get access to this data? Typically, marketers pay thousands each week for paid access to this data. And they're happy to pay because they know that this data makes them money. But what if I told you there was a way to get access to this data for free? Now, what I'm about to tell you has not been shared before. Uh, unconscious data itself is not scary especially when you make it and you can see it. Now, think about most social media posts. What, what data do you see? Usually it's likes, comments, and shares, right? Like those are the main pieces of data. Now, if you upload a video though, it's a little bit different. Like you get sometimes the number of views, uh, but you don't know, you don't know who viewed it, do you? There's no way to get information, that information, is there? Well, what if there was a way to see who viewed your videos? <laughs> Some of you already know what I'm talking about. You may have seen them on Snapchat. Now, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and LinkedIn have all hopped onto this bandwagon. You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about stories. Stories stick around only for one day, but they give you insight into the unconscious uh, information that you have never had access to before. Uh, many of you had used stories, but they didn't realize its actual, its true potential. Um, now, there, you have to keep in mind, like, stories isn't always used uh, in the best way possible. Um, you know, having a single story post per day isn't really enough to know if people are interested. Like, it doesn't really give you that much um, data. Uh, and then if you've got, like, 10 or more stories, I mean, that's a huge time sink uh, for, like, limited benefit. Like, you're not really going to gain the benefit of this. So um, I'm going to argue that the sweet spot is three or four stories per day, if you're able to. 
Uh, and how would you how would you do this? Well, it turns out it fits this pattern fits perfectly uh, in the 60 second uh, video maximum length. So like videos can uh, a lot of videos allow you to go like maximum 60 seconds. And so this fits perfectly in that 60 seconds. The key is you split the, the video into 15 second chunks. And then when you post it as a story, you post it as not one story, but as four different stories. And then when you click on your stories, do you see like uh, on a story, there's a button on the bottom, you click on the button on the bottom, whoops, you click the button on the bottom, and then you see a list, a list of all the people who have seen it. And this data is the people who have viewed it. So this is the unconscious input right here. And if you go further, if you click on the next step, right, what is the next step? So it's just the next video. So if you have three or four videos, you know, the first video, uh, I prefer to give people the benefit of the doubt. Uh, I say, okay, maybe you just watch the video, you're just kind of like accidentally slipped on it. Um, okay, but if you watch the second video, hmm, maybe, okay, so you've already watched 15 seconds or more. You watch the third video, ooh, it's watched 40, 30 seconds or more. Watch the fourth video, oh, what's going on? They, they've watched 45 seconds or more. That can be a, a very strong indication that this person is really interested in your creative work. And so beyond just collecting data uh, about, oh, how many likes and shares, you can also collect this data as well. And so I want to encourage you because this is a powerful, powerful technique. It is a really, it is really a game changer uh, in this space. And so you want to take advantage of this, this data, this unconscious data, as much as you are able to, in the, especially in this time. Because the next step I want to do is encourage you. Uh, I want to encourage you because this is something I'd like you to try out in practice, right? Give it a try, see how it works for you, uh, collect the unconscious data see what happens uh, on your social media. Uh, and then the, the thing that I'd also like to encourage you to do is to consider uh, if you found this type of information useful, take that information and write it, write it down. Like, I don't know, put it into a spreadsheet uh, or put it somewhere. And then you'll get a sense of like, oh, over time, like people have watched in this day, they watch this much. You know, even just like, okay, if you take the data, for example, and you just take a screenshot, you just push like the screenshot button, which is like the home and the, the middle button, that's a way of, of saving that data. So save the data and I know it's manual entry, but just type it in, right? Who's who's watching your stuff? Who's really interested in in what you have to present? This becomes a strong way of seeing the unconscious data that is such a big part of social media. What's the next step? Go, be creative, take the unconscious input that you see every single day and use that, use that to be creative, right? Um, I often say like as a computer scientist, I look at social media very differently than most people. I don't see this like system of oppression uh, because I see it as just this tool for rapidly sharing a type of disruption, your creative disruption. Um, and most people use social media in a consumption, like a, a sedation type way, uh, because it's just what you can. But I mean, since you can learn everything that you want online, there's really nothing, there's not a lot of barriers for you to get a radical idea or get any idea out there at scale. And so, yes, I want to encourage you.